Now I would like us to focus on working with GitHub. But before I will show you the basic ways of working with the repository, I would like to show you what GitHub is actually all about. If you do not have an account on GitHub yet, I hope you will create one after this course. GitHub is a platform that allows us to store the GitHub repositories on it. We are talking about the remote repositories because they are located on a GitHub servers. Thanks to the existence of such a repository, you have a backup of your project. But the main benefit of being on GitHub is the ability to work in a team because many people can work with such a remote repository. You can upload your patches to it and download the updates from it. GitHub is very useful and very popular. What you can see on your screen right now is the main GitHub page with the address github.com and you will see this screen if you are not logged into the GitHub. Now if you have an account already, all you need to do is to click this button right here, sign in. But if you don't have an account, you should click this button right here, sign up. If you don't have an account and want to create one, you can do it right now. It's very simple, so I won't be showing it. And it might be useful for you because I'm about to log into my account and show you the interface of GitHub from the perspective of a person that is logged in on a platform at the moment. So now I'm about to log into my account and you can do the same or create your own account if you haven't got one and come back to me in a minute. Now this is what you will see after creating an account on GitHub and logging into it. As you can see, it's the same address. It's github.com. But now you'll get this starting panel as a default screen. Now let's take a look at some example repository and let's check a big one. As you can see on your screen right now, I chose the React repository. React is a very popular JavaScript library. In fact, this library is so big and complex that it is considered by many people as a JavaScript framework. As you can see on your screen, React is owned by Facebook. You're probably already familiar with that name. Now, if you will create your own repository after entering the address of this repository, there will be visible your profile name and your repository name right here. It means that we can go now to the Facebook profile and check all of its public repositories. Because on GitHub, you can also have private repositories, not visible for everyone, but only for people working on some private project. So let's check it. You just have to click it. And now we are on Facebook profile and we can see all its public repositories. You can click them, check them if you want. Now you can see we are on Facebook page on a Bistro repository. We can go back. Here you can see technologies used. We have many of C++ right here, but we can see a Python right here. Let's check for another one. Here we can see JavaScript, for example. Here we can see the React repository. It's also made in JavaScript, obviously. What can we also see here are, for example, people engaged into this profile. When you hover on someone, you can see he is a member of Facebook. We have 170 accounts on GitHub related to Facebook. We can also see the popularity charts of those particular repositories as well. But now let's go back to the React page. And here we can see the whole working directory of this project. You can see some familiar files like readme.md, for example. Git ignore right here. We have some files, some folders. So basically, it's the whole working tree of this repository. When you scroll down a little bit, you can read the whole content of the readme MD file, which is displayed like this, and what we can find here. Some examples of use, a documentation, examples how to use it, and licenses, which are very important. It's good to see it to know what eventually 
we should place in our readme md file in our repositories. It's just good to place a proper description of your repository and your project and document it correctly. Such a file should at least contain some basic information. What is your project, how to use it, and so on. Let's scroll up a little bit. You already know this code button. When you click it, you can clone your repository, for example, by HTTPS protocol. All you need to do is to copy this link right here and put git clone with this link in your terminal or use the graphical interface in your code editor with placing this URL to clone this repository to your own computer and initialize a local repository in this way. Here we can see, for example, the branches of our project. We can see we are on the branch master. We can click it. We can see the different branches. We can switch to them, for example, this one. Now we are on another branch of that project, but let's go back to branch master. You can see it's the default one right here. That's where we are. Here you can see how many commits there is in this repository. You can click it. Here you have the whole list of the commits. You can also click on a particular commit to see it. Here you can see the commit message. Here you can see what actually changed in this commit. And you can check every commit in this repository. For example, this one. You can check it however you want. Now let's go back to our React page. You can also see that we got 138 tags. You can click it as well. Tags are the official released versions of this repository. So we can see we have all the versions right here from the newest to the oldest and we can scroll them down and check next pages if we want to. But let's go back. If we scroll down a little bit, we can see how many people use React on GitHub it's more than 6 million. And below you can see the contributors, which are the people who worked somehow to develop this repository, worked on this project somehow, at some point. Let's see what else we have here. Let's scroll up. Here you can see we have 526 issues. You can click it and you can see what it actually is. If somebody finds a bug in this repository, it can be pointed out and, for example, fixed in the next official version. As you can see, we have many types of issues. Some of these are unconfirmed. You can read it, you can check it if you want. I just let you know that something like this exists on GitHub. Now let's go back again. And next to issues, we have this pull requests options. And we have 181 of them. Let's click it. And here you can see all the pull requests. Some of them are accepted or declined, as you can see. But what are those pull requests? Those are the applications of people containing patches and fixes. Such applications may be rejected or accepted and added to the project. You can read all about it even here. If you know how to fix an issue, if you noticed some, you can do a pull request by your own and send it to the repository owner. Let's go back to our main page once again. And here we have also wiki overlap. Let's click it. It could be used for additional documentation. As you can see on React page, we only got the info that this wiki's content has been moved to the new React.js org website and the link to this website. Let's go back once again. We also have the insights overlap. Let's click it. And here we have some statistics and additional info about the project. We can check them if we are interested in it. Let's go back. 
Now, what's also interesting is this menu bar right here because it's only visible when you're logged into your GitHub account. So if you're not logged in right now, you won't even see this bar right here. But I strongly recommend you to create a GitHub account and log in. It's free and simple and lets you work with GitHub. So we have this watch option right here where you can follow a particular repository. You can set what notifications you'll get from it. You can add it to your favorites by clicking the star icon. And the most interesting option is fork option right here. When you click it, you'll add this repository to your own account. It's like cloning a repo to your own GitHub account. You can fork it on GitHub, clone it to your local repository, work on it and upload the changes back to the remote repository on your GitHub account. This way you can also do a pull request to some project with your own suggestions or fixes of some problems. All right, so much for getting to know GitHub. Now let's start working with it.